Hi, I'm Senator Ron Johnson. Welcome to this virtual Academy Day. Normally, my staff and the staff of the rest of the congressional delegation would meet with you in person to give you all the information you need to apply to one of our nation's service academies. Thank you for your interest in serving our country in this capacity. I consider the nomination process one of the most important tasks in my office. So good luck. I hope you find the information in this video presentation helpful. Hello, and thank you for your interest in serving your country as an officer in one of our military services. My name is Tony Blando, and I am Senator Johnson's Chief of Staff. I am also a retired Army officer and currently serve alongside seven other veterans in our office. Collectively, we have over 150 years of military service to our great nation. Senator Johnson believes that the Academy nominating process is one of the most important elements of his job since many of you will in just a few years be charged with leading America's sons and daughters in our military. He calls you the finest among us because you and everyone who has gone before you ensures our nation's torch of liberty continues to burn brightly. This is a very serious obligation. Please do not undertake the obligation without careful discernment. Upon commissioning, you will take an oath to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. I can think of no greater challenge and no greater responsibility. Since our Constitution was ratified in 1787, over one million men and women who have worn the uniform have given their lives for this nation. When you take the same oath they took, you not only are expected to support and defend our present national security interests, you also become the spirit of all servicemen and women who have gone before you. And even more important, you are the hope of all who will come after. Mr. Tyler Gordon is Senator Johnson's primary point of contact for our Academy nomination process. Tyler is an intelligent, passionate young man who puts his heart and soul into this process. Please feel free to call him at any time at 202-834-0011. This number, his email, and our website will also be on the screen. We will conduct our interviews this year via Zoom calls. If this is an issue, please contact Tyler as soon as possible. Again, on behalf of Senator Johnson, Thank you for considering service to our nation. I wish you well during this process and promise to do all we can to assist you. Thank you. I want to be a leader. I will challenge myself. I am committed to excellence. I am motivated. I want to serve to be a part of something bigger than myself. I want to be part of a proud legacy. I want a challenge. I want to be an officer in the United States Army. I, 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 I decided West Point. The United States Military Academy at West Point. Preparing cadets to become Army officers who will lead using strength of mind and body, strength of character and purpose, if you know who you are, if you know who you want to become, West Point will challenge you, shape you, inspire you to become a leader for a lifetime.
These granite walls along the banks of the Hudson protect and defend our time-honored values of duty, honor, and country. Values that not only charted the course of our great nation's history, but are the core of life as a West Point cadet, graduate, and Army officer. Stand with us, if you choose, where America's past and future intersect. Those who follow their paths to West Point must meet standards far more challenging than at any other college or university. They must fulfill the demand to provide a worthy example for those they lead. If you seek an appointment to West Point, becoming an officer in the world's finest army must be your personal goal, not the dream of your parents, not the hope of your teachers, not the vision of your coach. You have to look deep within yourself and hear the call to lead loud and clear. Unlike other elite colleges and universities, the value of a West Point education is demonstrated when, as an Army officer, your leadership, even your everyday decisions, affect the lives of others around the world. Both civilian and military faculty educate cadets in more than 40 majors in liberal arts, sciences, and engineering. They share a level of expertise and life experience you simply can't find anywhere else. West Point graduates are effective strategic thinkers with both global and ground level perspectives. Our classrooms are windows to the world where you can learn to execute high-tech operations and experience real-time critical decision-making. You must realize your education at West Point has an extraordinary mission to prepare you for service to our nation as an officer in the United States Army. Cadets get more than a top-notch undergraduate education. They get world-class leadership experiences and the world's finest military and physical training. You train mentally and you train physically. The demands are intense, and the pace is persistent. The sacrifices are real, but the rewards are greater. Every West Point cadet develops a warrior spirit. That spirit is called upon in every academy challenge, especially on the athletic fields. The fields of friendly strife. Cadets are fierce competitors in more than 25 intercollegiate sports and more than 20 intramural and club sports. Everyone participates in athletics with the critical benefit of honing your body, your reflexes, and your leadership skills while experiencing firsthand the power of teamwork, so essential to your role as a United States Army officer. West Point graduates earn a Bachelor of Science degree and a commission as a second lieutenant in the United States Army. They choose from a broad range of Army career options from infantry and aviation to medical service and finance, each with a critical mission for our nation and personal benefits that go beyond your service commitment. Some high school students will settle for just a college education, 
but you can choose to live an extraordinary life. I got to play laser tag with real tanks. How cool is that? After West Point, your decisions are about the lives and well-being of others. A life that leaves the world a better, safer place. A world on which you have left your mark as a graduate of West Point. If you think your personal path can lead you to the long gray line, you will stand beside Rhodes Scholars, astronauts, CEOs, governors, presidents, generals, and all West Point graduates who make history every day. Wearing the uniform of a United States Army officer is not just an occupation. It's a commitment to a way of life. It's what we do. It's who we are. It's how we lead. The United States Military Academy at West Point. Developing leaders for a lifetime. I present the crest of the class of 2020. The outstanding class of 2020. 2020, don your branch insignia. Class of 2020, I propose a toast. I propose a toast. I propose a toast to the United States Military Academy. Welcome everyone. I am Second Lieutenant Ramel Spite. Thank you for coming to United States Air Force Academy admissions brief. I was a graduate of class of 2020. While my time at the academy, I was a military history major. I was involved in Club Frisbee. And after graduation and after this assignment as an admission advisor, I will be going to pilot training. Along with me, we have Second Lieutenant Dominique Gordon here with us. Yeah, like Lieutenant Spite said, my name is Second Lieutenant Dominique Gordon. I'm a proud graduate of the Air Force Academy class of 2019. I majored in behavioral sciences with a minor in French. And I participated in club rugby all four years and took up four, took home four national championships while I was there. I'm excited to talk to all of you. Uh, let's dive right into what we have to offer at the Air Force Academy. So we're going to start with our academics. So this is our academics and a list of our majors and minors at the Air Force Academy. Um, even though I was a behavioral science major, I still took aeronautical engineering, astronautical engineering, and pretty much classes in every single one of these disciplines. One, because we want well-rounded uh, cadets who turn into well-rounded officers by having a knowledge of different things across these boards. And then two, no matter what you major in at the Air Force Academy, you are going to receive your bachelor's degree of science. And I know some of that sounds intimidating, but I promise you that we have dedicated staff and faculty to help you through these classes. We have about a seven to one student to teacher ratio. So that allows a lot of in-depth study. And we have teachers who are really willing and readily available to help you through some of these classes. So next we'll talk about the academy experience. This is what we say separates us from a normal college or even the other service academies. So our honor code, our military training, our airmanship programs, and our location in Colorado Springs, Colorado is what separates us from these other schools. And we're really going to dive into the airmanship piece because you're going to find a lot of similarities militarily and honor code wise across service academies, but airmanship is what really sets us apart. Um, nowhere else are you going to find uh, your first jump out of an airplane is completely solo. And that's called our jump program. And the top slide, we have our gliding program. So this little plane has no engine in it. It's towed into a sky by a, a different plane. And then after that, you let go and you can glide around in the sky for a good, good amount of time. And here you, you have the options to solo if you're able to go, get through the program at a good enough pace and where you feel confident enough and the instructors feel confident in you to allow you to solo. It's a pretty cool experience. And the bottom picture is also flying, but this is power of flight. There's an actual engine in this plane, and I personally took, took this program senior year at the academy, and it was a great experience for someone who, like, I wanted to be a pilot, but I'd never actually flown before, so this is my first time flying in an actual plane, so it's just nice to figure out the controls, see what you like, see how it is in an actual plane, to see if it's something you could see yourself doing in the future. It's a great, great experience, and I highly recommend it. Another thing I like to highlight on the slide is the leadership opportunities that we have here, not just in airmanship, but throughout the Air Force Academy. We like to call the Air Force Academy a leadership laboratory. So the person teaching me how to jump out of a plane and teaching me to fly in those gliders was another 20, 21 year old. They're other cadets. So you go from participating as a student or as in these programs, such as airmanship 
or basic cadet training or our skip survival training, having the opportunity to actively lead the programs that you were just a participant in. And it really does teach you what kind of leadership style you want um, and what kind of leader you want to be and use as you graduate and become an officer in the United States Air Force, United States Space Forces. So after you survive jump, you survive basic cadet training, uh, you throw your hat up in the air and become a proud graduate of the Air Force Academy, you enter into one of our 35 different career fields. So like Lieutenant Gordon said, we have 35 different career fields. While, while some, you can have any major such as pilot, and uh, there are other um, career fields such as physicists, chemists, chemists, and engineers that you have to have that specific degree at the academy to do. But also like pilot training, that, that comes at a 10 year commitment because the Air Force puts more time and money into you. They want more years out of you. So that's 10 years while other jobs like engineers only five. And then going down to the last statistic, you see that 10% of graduate school. So we have about 10% that go on to get their master's right away, uh, go to law school, public policy, or medical school. But that opportunity is not just available straight out of the academy. You can continue to have those opportunities even post uh, when you're on active duty. Um, you'll get the opportunity to go at least get your master's at some point in your career if that's something that you want to do. So next, it's probably the most important slide in the entire deck, how to actually apply. So you first will go to academymissions.com. This is the one-stop shop for all your questions you may have about applying. You can start the application in March of your junior year of high school. And the first step of the application is the pre-candidate questionnaire. And after that, you will be put into candidate status and so on and so forth. It's a good points to know is when you start the academy, there are rolling deadlines. So let's say you and your friend apply, but at different times, they might have different deadlines than you do. So it's important to stay up on your actual application and stay informed on those dates. And for those a little bit younger, I mean, you have summer seminar. This opens in December of your high school year. You can come here to the academy for a summer and see what life is kind of like and just see the environment and see if there's something you're actually interested in. And all that is located on our website at academydestinations.com. If we don't answer any questions in this briefing that you might have, Academy Nations is a great one-stop shop for all your questions. Feel free to contact us via email, our social media, uh, call us even, and we'll get your questions answered. So to summarize, these are the, the five points of why, you know, the Air Force Academy is a great place and, and really five like selling points. We like to say it has no tuition costs. No room board. In fact, we pay you to go to school. So that's the monthly stipend. Medical and dental coverage and a guaranteed career um, in either our Air Force or our Space Force. So great opportunities there. I wouldn't trade my Air Force Academy experience for the life of me. Um, and I know Lieutenant Spite would have the similar comments too. Oh, yeah, I would agree by far. Those four years, they were tough, but I made the best friends I could possibly meet. So now I know people in almost every state in the country it was just amazing to me. And just the gates and doors the academy opened for me are awesome. I've become a leader. I've gained confidence in myself and my ability to lead. At such a young age, I feel like I already have a stage in my life where I'm going straight and I have goals. And not many people can say that at my age. So it's an amazing feeling. We would like to thank you guys all for listening to our brief. And if any of your questions weren't answered by this video, please, again, head over to our website, academymissions.com, and we'll be happy to answer any like questions that you have. Thank you for listening to us, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you very much. I'm going to go get yelled at. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to military school. <laughs> Have you been accepted with the Air Force? Appointment accepted. All right. You're in it, buddy. I'm so excited. Thank you so much. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cadet Hayden. Cadet Hazlett. United States Air Force Academy. Your first step towards becoming an officer in the world's greatest Air Force. Cadre are here to prepare you for the challenges you will face both as cadets and as officers. Get off my box! <laughs>
We're the United States Coast Guard Academy. We're in the top 100 undergraduate business programs, the top 10 undergraduate engineering programs, the top 25 STEM colleges, the top 15% of best colleges and universities. We're in the top 1% for community service engagement and the number one top regional public institution and 100% focused on our mission, graduating officers to lead the United States Coast Guard. For many of you watching this, you're in the process of counting your series of last events, such as your last football game, your last prom, your last day of high school. The entire senior year seems to be revolved around these last events that for most of us were a mixture of euphoria and sadness. I remember that intense feeling of wanting to break free from my youth and dive headfirst into a new life far away from where I had spent most of my life, cultivating my skills and personality where I had built all of my relationships. But I knew that once I left, it would never be quite the same whenever I came back home to visit. The day before our day, I met some of my classmates. Everyone was decked out in their unique style of civilian clothes, representing who they had been throughout high school. My hair was down to my eyes and over my ears. My sneakers were multicolored, and the butterflies nestled in my stomach region were beginning to flap their wings. At some point during the day, the yelling began. And I suppose the yelling scared the butterflies off for a bit because adrenaline took over my system for most of the rest of the summer. I knew the yelling was going to come. I had watched all of the Swab Summer videos on YouTube, but actually experiencing it myself was much different than watching someone else experiencing it. Eventually, you learn to kind of tune it out so it does not get in the way of your own thoughts. But it took some time. My civilian summer was over and my Swab Summer had begun. It was everything I expected and everything I did not. Yelling, IT sessions, in-doc, stress, stress, stress. Every day was different and the same. I learned how to shine my shoes, make a hospital corner, square an actual corner, iron my shirts, and hold a piece. I learned how to work with a group of people and succeed through times of failure. Eventually, those long days became weeks and the summer had ended. I remember writing in my thoughts of the day journal, that the summer had felt like it took nine months when it was only seven weeks. But even though summer was long and grueling, that feeling of accomplishment was great and well worth it. To all of you current high school seniors, enjoy the rest of your high school year. Of course, make sure you're in prime shape when you arrive. But make sure you also enjoy your last moments of high school with your best friends and family. Do not stress or worry about how the summer will be. Welcome to the United States Merchant Marine Academy at Kings Point, New York. Here you'll find outstanding academics, regiment, competitive athletics, and a hands-on experiential sea year. For the past 75 years, USMMA has been the best kept secret of the Federal Service Academies. Here at the Academy, I've found my own leadership style. The programs here, they're great. 
not only is it challenging, but it's actually applicable to life. King's Pointers are able to adapt to any situation. In times of peace and war, we transport the goods which include food, resources, weapons, and we transport that across the ocean to the other branches to serve and defend our countries. You can either work in the maritime industry or you can work in active duty, the military. This school gives me a proving ground. I've always aspired for something more. You also get the opportunity to serve something bigger than yourself. I like how every day when you wake up, you're waking up with a purpose. I've seen a lot of growth in myself since the first day. My sea year experience really helped me transition into working on a tugboat where I'm working now. Here at the academy, you not only have to be a leader, you have to be a follower. And I think that being a follower teaches you how to be an even better leader. Every day, you're improving yourself. I decided to come to the Merchant Marine Academy because of the millions of opportunities that they give you after graduation. Any young women out there, any young women of color, I would tell them just to be strong-minded. Have tough skin because it's not going to be easy. We have, I think, the best sailing program in the country. I tried to find ways I could become an officer because that was also what my uh, godfather encouraged me to do. You are officer material. You need to pursue becoming an officer. You are choosing a life of service. Academics, the regiment, athletics, and your sea year. Apply online today. This is about a place. This is about a voyage. This is about leadership. It is about expectations, integrity, responsibility, and tradition. We are sharing a most uncommon voyage, but a common purpose. We have all come here to prepare, to lead, to serve. It begins. The journey's first moments. Embarking on a profoundly challenging and life-shaping voyage, the expectations of each of these bright and motivated young people are only exceeded by the expectations of the institution which has chosen to accept them aboard. Every one of them is facing a formidable change in his or her young life. Eleven hundred lives beginning a transformation at an extraordinary institution. To lead and to serve. It is the experience of the United States Naval Academy. The setting is historic Annapolis, Maryland. Annapolis, where a sense of the past confronts the challenge of the future. The transformation begins. 1,100 future officers, achievers, successful in the schools from which they've come, but hardly knowing how it could feel to be he bends in his wrist. A plebe. Are there any questions about the hand salute? Hey, how about started. your menus? What's for morning meal? Yes. Sir, French toast and bacon, sir. Yes, yes. 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 sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Why don't you know it? Oh, yes, sir. Up, up. For every plebe, the six weeks of plebe summer are a crucible. They are confronting and moving beyond their assumed limits of endurance. Moving together beyond fear and pain. 
They are preparing to take their place as the newest members of the United States Naval Academy Brigade of Midshipmen. Receive the report. Sir, brigade is formed. Take your post. The brigade is the academy. Four thousand midshipmen. And for the plebes, the rigors of plebe summer were just a beginning. For every student in this institution, the challenge to grow and to achieve academically and intellectually is implicit. Supporting their growth is an extraordinary set of teaching tools and facilities. Main ballast system. With a faculty that is about equally balanced between civilian and military, students receive important and contrasting perspectives. Put you into a tactical scenario this morning that's going to challenge you both from a leadership perspective and their full and demanding classwork is integral to the demands and expectations of their military and professional learning experience. There are many settings and ways in which academy-centered professional development takes place. Military training is a major focus of the academy's academic year. But midshipmen summers are fully devoted to professional training. In active duty operational settings, every midshipman is given direct hands-on experience. It's called Summer Cruise. Midshipmen Summers are designed to expose each of them to a full range of mission experience. From fleet duty at sea and naval air operations, to Marine Corps amphibious and aviation action, to submarine duty, and a wide spectrum of other important combat and support missions. But the excitement of summer crews is all too soon a memory. And the rigors of being an academy student reassert their necessary emphasis. Although academic and leadership development are primary, there is another aspect in the development of every midshipman that is crucial. Physical development. Physical excellence. Between the highs, there are the lows. The grinding work, the exams, what they call the dark ages. But there is a bright ending and beginning each year. Commissioning week. Whether this is the final parade of year one or year four, there is glory for all in what these young men and women have learned and achieved and can celebrate 
with pride. And the celebrating takes many forms. A salute by the Navy's Blue Angels. There's tradition and romance as those completing their third year receive their rings, christened by waters from the seven seas. It's a night to remember. This is it. The day. The end. The beginning. John Bromoso. James K. Craig. John T. This moment's meaning. This moment's symbolism will be etched on the memories of all of them as both climax and first step towards serving their nation. I guess I'll skip the part about class prize. <laughs> I propose three cheers for those we're about to leave behind. Hip, hip. celebrating their achievement and their evolving part of a proud legacy. We are celebrating their preparation for what lies ahead. to serve. It's the destination of our voyage. And we are prepared. The United States Naval Academy. Annapolis.